Hello everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome finally to the haul video of the 25 hour flea market <laughs> that I visited like, I don't know, now it's a month ago um, in uh, the region like Switzerland and Germany, Kreuzlingen, Konstanz. It always happens once a year in uh, June. I visited my friend Zelina over there, um, had a whole like vacation in Switzerland and in the end we ended up there and at this point you should have seen like at least two, like I think it's two, um, like videos, the ones before this one here uh, where I just showed all of this flea market footage. <laughs> Um, and now we're getting to the haul. Um, it might be one video, it might be two videos, it's a lot. So I guess probably it's two videos, but you have seen the title of the video. If it says part one or something, then it's probably a, a two-parter. Um, by the way, my friend Selina over at Vintage Gaudi, uh, her video is up like for a long time. So her flea market footage video and also her haul video. Um, so you can go over there and check this one out if you want because like we mostly like it was interesting concerning like what we filmed in the footage we often filmed different things <laughs> but still you can also see stuff that i found in zelina's video and you have you can see uh, stuff that maybe she found in my video or, so, or whatever so we have a little bit of different footage so it, it makes sense if you want the full picture but oh my goodness let's start i think I have, I will structure it like this, that I start with a couple of Barbies or dolls, not just Barbies. Um, then I will get to um, like some accessories, Barbie, like whatever, a little bit of stuff, but also then all of the other toys. It's not just dolls, obviously I also picked up other toys. We get to all of the other toys that are not dolls. Then I think we are getting to, I think at that point, maybe more Barbie accessories and the Barbie fashions that I picked up. And in the end, we're getting again to dolls because it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 dolls if you count the small ones 15 16 dolls so mm, yeah. it should be like probably as it will probably be two videos first some dolls other stuff and then some dolls again it's not chronological as i said i put it more together thematically so let's start um yeah there was this you definitely saw it in the footage there was this one um like lot barbie lot that we picked up the second day so the sunday one of the first things uh, we uh, i filmed on sunday um where there were a lot of 80s dolls and fashions and yeah we in the end we picked up everything and then split it between me and selena um depends she, she wanted more of the fashions i probably got more of the dolls but also fashions but um as i said the fashions will be a separate part let's start with the dolls that were in this lot what was in there so this is not too crazy although it is a wonderful doll um pink and pretty barbie was in there i have her already so she is a doll from 1982 uh, 83 so a lot of her outfit pieces were in there though she's not complete and she has not super good hair anymore it is it might not be cut it's kind of yeah it's the correct length but i boy washed it several times it's just it's it's just not it <laughs> anymore um and uh, there's also several plugs missing so i would need to fill it up if i want to like give her to someone else definitely and here you see yeah as i said i ball washed it several times even what i actually never do uh with um what is it called with um uh, fabric softener it still didn't really work so but yeah she has her top and this top is in a better condition than the one that I have on mine so this top will go to the one in my display but the rest there she comes with a shawl and with uh, the skirt instead of the trousers oh I forgot to put shoes on her <laughs> um, the cool thing is also there's the complete um, accessory like uh, earrings and necklace combination uh, in there I have not put it on her it will be in the part where I get to the fashions and, and those I will put then on the one that I have. She's in a better condition because she doesn't have most of her accessories like her jewelry. So that was really good. But actually when we found them, <laughs> uh, it was kind of switched the, the earrings and ring uh, or whatever necklace between the two main dolls that were in there. Because the other one is 
a diva from Barbie and the Rockers. And yeah, she, like the pink and pretty Barbie, was wearing her like giant earrings. And the other way around, she was wearing the superstar jewelry of the pink and pretty. Um, so, but mostly everything is there. She is, yeah, she doesn't have her like coat. She would have a crinkly, a blue metallic-y like coat as well. But the, other than that, she has her jumpsuit, uh, all of her accessories. Uh, one sock is missing. She does have the shoes, the, the, the um, hot orange mules. They're also in there, but they are in this part where we get to all of the fashions. Uh, I didn't want to put it on her because she's constantly losing them. I will just put them on her, put her on display. Yeah, because she will definitely go on display. I actually have Diva from Barbie and the Rockers. She is from 85, 86, so from the first wave of the Rockers dolls. So not the ones, not the live dancing ones, uh, the first wave. But mine is, yeah, well, it's not in that good condition. Um, she was the one where I repaired the nose and I, lot of, I know a lot of you don't like how we repair the nose. I, get, I got comments that she looks horrible and I should throw her in the bin and I should just uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, get a better one, etc. I will not throw this other one away and definitely not in the bin. I will just style her completely different, uh, probably give her completely like, um, uh, straight hair because this one has oh my goodness this she looks still so good her hair is perfect um, yeah so I have this accessory that goes to her I have the earrings she has her um, bracelet then we have um, the ring and this accessory as well this is mostly put in her hair like more like a you know I don't know hippie thing around more the, like like this but I prefer the hair to be puffier and not put down so I put this hair ex accessory in her the belt I mean this is attached to the um, is it oh, yeah it is attached to the jumpsuit anyways uh, but it's also there and yeah only one of the socks was there <laughs> and then she comes with these um, orange mules so it's amazing but I wish it would have been one of the other characters for example uh, the Dana of this wave I don't have and I don't have any of the DDs so the black Barbie at the rocker stall um, but I don't know she is amazing so and she's definitely an upgrade though I will not get rid of the other one because I couldn't also not not sell the other one because it's a one with a repaired nose and um, what else was in there mm, yeah there were two of the uh, Petra babies, which I'm yeah, uh, not too crazy about, but it's it's okay. I like Petra. Petra is a doll brand from um, Germany back then. Actually, goes also way back into the early 60s. So a Barbie clone, but uh, was good a good selling one in in Germany back then. And they went until the mid 80s or uh, not mid 90s. I would say you could still get Petra dolls. So I have Petra dolls, and these babies they just look almost the same as you know the heart family babies or the rosebud babies from barbie they have i think it's an exact mold copy they're just not painted as cute but they're still cute and i don't have them so we have got the boy and the girl with their original outfit so i have a small petra doll collection um, these are probably from the late 80s or something uh, so you know exactly probably the time when the Hart family was released. Petra also did this thing, but in this case, Petra was the mom, <laughs> not as Barbie. Barbie was never the mom. Uh, they, over at Mattel, made a different doll line for this. Within the Petra line, it was just, you know, Petra got children. So uh, this would have, I mean, I think I have one of them, but she's wearing something else. Um, but now they can go to my Petra and Fred. It's fine. Um, at least something I didn't have yet. So can they actually? Yeah, they can also sit. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so then there was definitely a skipper in there that, for example, Zelina took. It was also an older, um, early 80s or late 70s skipper. Um, but one doll that I got out of this was this old Zindi. I'm not a Zindi collector. I will not start collecting Zindi now. Um, I'm not too crazy about this doll line mainly because they just look so different to what i prefer or what i grew up with um because this is not a style that was available well, of, of cindy when i was young of course cindy 
was still around when I, I was a child, but it was then the um, Hasbro Zindi. <laughs> they looked almost like Barbies. While here, uh, she still looks different. I mean, um, is she actually, I think she is about the same height as Barbie, maybe a tiny bit smaller, but she has a bigger head and the body is also constructed differently. Um, Zindi is actually kind of the Barbie competitor um, from the UK back then, you could say, although she does, I mean, look at her face. Uh, she was produced by Pedigree and um, it doesn't really look like Barbie. You could even say she was probably more inspired by Tammy, which was an American doll line, um, also in the early 60s, I think in 62, while Zindi then came around in 63. So it might be possible that her face and her look is more based on Tammy um, by Ideal. But yeah, Zindi, Pedigree, UK, definitely uh, Britain's best-selling doll brand um, back then. Um, you know, the doll you love to dress. She was more of a girl next door look, yet still stylish mostly. Um, obviously she has changed over the years, but the version that is kind of released now went kind of back to this with this face. If you like this, totally fine. Um, I would never have picked up a like 60s, 70s Zindi doll. She might still be early 80s or mid 80s, something like that uh, with this look just as, as the doll, I would never have picked it up. But as I was in a lot, I'm fine to, to keep her. Uh, she, like, you know, can go into my, like, collection where I just have, like, one, an example of a doll line. Um, she is um, actually the active Cindy, or the ballerina, as you can maybe say. So she was released, so this was probably one of the most, like, the best-selling Zindis, because she was released over multiple years, I think from the, um, you know, 70s up until, what did I write down? Uh, mid 70s up until the early 80s with different box designs, as I said, sometimes called Active Zindi, sometimes called Ballerina Zindi. Interestingly, the box was not like a um, vertical one, but a horizontal box because she was doing the splits in the box. So it was a, like, like this. Ta-da! She obviously actually had a bun, but I love to keep her with open hair because, um, I mean, she looked horrible when I got her like that. She was so dirty. Oh my freaking God. And I thought the hair is like just crunchy AF and like um, not like salvageable, but she has actually pretty nice and shiny hair. So, um, so I like to keep her open like this. This is the original outfit. Yeah, everything was in there. Uh, the ballerinas in these always came with this one, um, you know, leotard, one ballet skirt with these tights. And these shoes I did have. So um, they were not in the lot, but I had the, the Zindi ballerina shoes. Um, yeah, the doll actually, I think she has a mechanism in here, but it's not really working anymore because I can hear, well, you can see. There is something, but it's it's so different to what Barbie bodies feel. Then yeah, the arms they don't really hold up. They're very, I don't know the the the. You know, so I think yeah, you can move the arms like this, and then she has wrist articulation, and she has a separate piece between her like body and her head. So there's a separate neck piece, and this is horribly discolored. The rest not, just this piece in between is super yellow. I might try to get this back just with my normal, you know, Salon 40 cream treatment. Um, I hope this will work. Um, yeah, so my first and probably the only Zindi. There were actually also uh, quite some Zindi fashions in there. Uh, I think, or at least we think because ah, Zindi is not that easy to identify. Uh, from that time period for me because I don't have like a lot of websites that show a lot of dolls or fashions etc um, but I think I have I identified a couple of them a couple of them I took I think Selena has a couple of them and then there were some that were so dirty and so ripped and everything we put them in the pile of maybe just donate this again um, there might have been some of the Zindi ones in there but where do I put her 
Okay, let's get to uh, two dolls, two more dolls. Oh, actually, it's also three. I didn't even count this one in. That also came from one other kind of lot where it was just me. Uh, Zelina did not uh, get any of this because here is one Petra doll. And I actually didn't even get this Petra for the doll, actually for the dress that she was wearing because she had a mod like Barbie dress from the late 60s on. It will be in the part where I show you all of the Barbie fashions. Um, but I'm not, uh, uh, um, I'm like, um, like mad at picking up more Petra dolls. Because um, as I said, it was kind of for me the, like Barbie was always the main thing in terms of, you know, fashion dolls. But I had Petras and I also liked Petras. And um, if I could choose like between maybe you can go there and no, the Barbie you cannot get, it's a little bit too expensive or something. Um, I would definitely not pick a Steffi Love or Steffi, Steffi Love, no. Um, I don't know if I ever saw, you know, the Hasbro Zindis back then. I think, yeah. But um, my second choice would then always be a Petra because they were also nice and Petra had nice accessories, also nice fashions. So um, I'm horrible with identifying Petra dolls because there's no website that kind of lists them with their faces or something. And it's so difficult if you search for, you know, different. I know what the Petra dolls were called, a couple of them, etc. And that you try to look at the boxes online when you see like still inbox dolls but you cannot see the face of them. It's so different, uh, so difficult. And most of them look very similar, but this one actually has a different uh, face, at least in terms of um, her eye makeup. Can you see? She has this winged, and it's not a typical like um, turquoise blue that Petra mostly has. This is more like a, a periwinkle eyeshadow, and it has this wing. So I'm pretty sure she, I should be able to identify her, and she has a, a very nice, um, light um, pink lip. So also the other Petras sometimes have not as of a, of a light pink. And I just gave her this wonderful fashion, which I think is from Petra. This head probably just doesn't come from this fashion, but yeah, I love her in this outfit. Um, her hair is not very good anymore. Um, and Petra, I think has, to me, it feels like some of the dots might have polypropylene hair and some of them might have um, nylon hair. This could also be a nylon, just very rough, you know, sometimes pony hair also gets rough. Uh, so um, I don't know, but it's also a little bit of a different hair color to the other Petras that I have. It is more, it's more platinum grayish. So I don't know, she looks fine. And um, actually one of her legs is a little bit loose, but if you don't play around with it a little like <laughs> too much, then it's fine. And I also always like to put a tights on adults where the legs are loose or like a little bit broken. Uh, though Petra bodies and fashions have a good quality, the legs are one of the weak points. <laughs> uh, so, but I was happy to pick this doll up, but actually the one that I wanted more is actually the Ken that uh, this other seller had. And this is this one. Um, I think this is the original Malibu Ken from the early 70s. Or it could be one of the others. And even though it could be Malibu Ken, he, it's not said that he was released in the early 70s because the Malibu Barbie line, you know, the Sunset Malibu, which was started in 71, was released up until the mid 70s. So I think the last dolls of this line were even released in 76 or something. But um, and there were a couple of other Kens that also had the same tan and the same hair and the same face. So I don't know. But um, to me, like people would say, yes, this is a Malibu Ken. So um, so the first one that would have like red sh uh, swim shorts would uh, come, as I said, in 71. Then he was all of these years between. She was uh, he was available uh, in '76. He would still be available, but with green swim shorts. And there was other, um, as I said, cans that have kind of the same uh, face with this super dark tan. Oh, his head is a little loose. <laughs> super dark tan. This like butter yellow hair. Uh, these super dark eyebrows and with blue eyes painted the same way. So it could also be the 1975 gold medal can um, or the 1978 Sun and Surf or Spielmitt can, a European one, or the 1979 Beach Fun 
Strandspaß kennen, which would be a Euro and Canada exclusive. So I cannot tell because uh, the seller didn't have any, like in a lot of other Barbie fashions, so there was nothing including that would tell me which can it could be. Uh, I just gave him a random outfit that looked like he is going to the beach, because to me he's definitely a beach can. <laughs> so that's his job, beach. And yeah, my Malibu line kind of is growing. I have, uh, you know, I have a Malibu PJ, I have, uh, I have Malibu Christy. Um, I might have a Malibu Barbie very soon. Um, I have actually more, which you haven't seen in terms of Malibu. Um, definitely not a Malibu skipper yet, but um, yeah, as I said, the Malibu line is like the ones that were like dominating Barbie in the 70s. From this, we are getting now to a couple of um, accessories that were in this lot, because I did not only pick up the Petra and the Ken, but also this. Um, this <laughs> and this. So this comes mostly, this is mostly, you know, you see Barbie accessories, though it's not really Barbie, most of it is the Hart family. And yes, there's also one Hart family baby in here. Um, we can do a little comparison time <laughs> uh, concerning Hart family uh, baby girl and maybe the Petra baby girl. Oopsie. Though, I mean, body-wise, they have the exact same bodies. They just use a little bit of a different material. The Petra bodies are more rubbery, while the Hart family bodies are hat family baby. I can't talk anymore. Babies' bodies are more plastic, and the face. I think it's if it's not the same face mold, it's like super similar. And they're just painted a little bit differently. I think they are not the exact same face mold. She has a little bit more of an open mouth, while she doesn't. But you see the eyes are a little bit cuter and this is definitely polypropylene hair while she has saran hair. And obviously you can see the different colors of the hair. She has also blush and she doesn't. Well, the Hart family, I said it quite often on my channel already because here and there you find Hart family dolls within like, you know, Barbie lots or whatever, because uh, they're so similar to Barbie. Uh, they were a doll line separate from the Barbie family and friends group, although also released by Mattel uh, from the mid, mid 80s until the late 80s. And you know, they had a mom, a dad, they had two children. Later on, they also got a grandpa and a grandma and neighbors and neighbor kids, etc. So it was just, you know, all of this family life, having children, while Barbie was not supposed to have children. And so they made the separate line. Uh, there was no Hart family mom or dad in the slot. The only doll in the slot was her. But here we have, for example, uh, something that goes to one of the uh, accessory or like furniture sets. Um, the, which one is this? This is from the baby's play set. It would come with this and with actually this rocking horse that I found quite often at the flea market, never picked up. I might pick it up the next time I see it because I have this now. Um, but there's more stuff. What do we have here? I couldn't identify all of it, but a cup, for example, uh, I couldn't identify these, but I guess they also, because it's probably for mom and dad, something like a camping or like a, a explorer set or something. I couldn't find uh, these. This I'm also not sure if this is anything from the Hart family. Uh, it might, it might not be. It's like one of those baby blankets. Um, there's, a, but there's definitely stuff from uh, the camping fun set, which We've got this fireplace here. It's just a hollow thing, but it came with a you know, camping fun set for the Hart family. It looks pretty cool. Uh, for, for photos, it's definitely nice. Um, it came with these chairs, these camping chairs, two of them in brown color. Um, and a couple of you know, cooking devices. <laughs> so we have like pans and um, you know, stuff like that here for camping, a lantern. Um, so this comes from this camping set. Ah, uh, yeah, by the way, I think these probably should go to a set that has to do with this because it's the same colors. And they also had fashion packs, so it might also just be from a, a fashion pack from... Why is it not focusing on me? Now it's focusing. Uh, it might also be just from a fashion pack, So, but it's definitely something from the Hart family. Um, by the way, this is the original little dress of the baby girl. So uh, she would come uh, as I said, with the mom, but also with this, but also with this dress, which looks very similar to her mom's dress. 
Um, I know this is something, this is a bathing suit that goes to another set. I don't know what this is, that's a little bag also. I don't know, maybe it is from Heart Families because it has the same kind of purple shade. Maybe it goes to this set, I don't know. Uh, and this ball also goes to the um, um, to this here because I have part of the set already. Uh, this is called a, a Water Fun, I think. Yeah, Water Fun. It is like really like a little basin where you could put in water. It's, you know, deflatable, inflatable. It comes with this little water toy ball. Uh, this is the bathing suit for the little baby. And yes, again, two chairs. These here for mom and dad to sit around, <laughs> sit here next to it. It would also come with some um, towels. I have one of those towels already. And it comes with actually with two more floaties. These, I already have this one, so there should also be one for the boy. So it's not a complete set, but all of this goes to the water fun set of the Hart family. Then I have, I have not found out where this little wagon goes, but I'm very sure it has kind of the same color as this, so it must also be Hart family. It's just a little, in German I would say Bollerwagen. It's a little wagon where you could put in one of the babies and drive it around. Um, and then there is definitely stuff from the camper, which yeah, we had the camping fun set. Oh yeah, and uh, this little, oh, where is it? This little rattle is also from the Hart family. I mean, the same mold was also later on used for, you know, Shelly Kelly, etc. But yeah, I have four of these chairs. They are, you saw, the same mold as the brown ones that I have here. They come from the camping fun set. <laughs> Well, this really comes from the camper. There was also a Hart Family camper. And if you uh, remember, or not remember, but if you've seen the um, big, like, Barbie camper from the 70s, the yellow-orange one, this also came with the same ones. So this is a mold that was reused very often. It's all just these camping chairs. <laughs> so you can find them in different colors, then they come from different Barbie sets or these from the Hart Family set. Uh, so a lot of Hart Family stuff. I'm most happy about the swimming pool thing because I have part of this set already. Um, and there's one more Barbie thing in there. It's also a cool thing actually. Which is this um, surf, <laughs> windsurfing board, but it's not complete. Uh, but you can see it has a 90s Barbie logo. Is it actually focusing? Yeah, it is. Uh, and it comes from 1992. It's just from a set that was called the Barbie surf set. It came with uh, this um, like sail thingy here. Came with the surfboard itself. You could put in Barbie's legs there. Here actually, so this doesn't really clip in very good and it's way too small. There was another like, let's say, I don't know what, 10 centimeter long white thingy plastic uh, stick that would connect this and then you could use it. But it also came with some other accessories. Also one of those balls here, though I think this comes from the Hart Family one because I've seen this one with other colors rather, but, but still it might also be this one. But it came also with sunglasses and with some sun lotion, etc. So bottles of sun lotion. <laughs> so not real ones, like Barbie sized ones. Um, so the Barbie surf set from 1992. So there was quite a lot of stuff that I was, I mean, it's nothing that I would usually pick up like, like, oh my goodness, I need all of these pieces. No, they will not go on display. But I they're so fun to have and um, as I said, it, it came in kind of the lot with, with these um, other dolls. And the best one out of this lot for me is, the, um, is for me the Malibu can. Yeah, okay. I think we're getting to one more doll, but it's not even a Barbie doll. And then we get to more accessories and other um, like toys. And in the end, as I said, return to dolls. So it's not a Barbie doll, no. It's a Lady Lovely Locks doll. We've got Maiden Fair hair here. Ah, yeah, there was this part of the flea market which was uh, also kind of advertised as being the children's flea market. And usually you mostly find, you know, new toys there. But there was this girl sitting or standing there. I immediately was like, saw it, bought it, like, I don't know, one euro, I think. 
um, her head was like squished down but like everything was there it's not broken and the um, like the ball joint thingy the joint neck pack whatever you call them was in her head so she is fine again they have a really like they can have an issue with this so just even if it's not broken it just pops out her hair is so nice and she had her original dress no she did not come with the pixie tails i just put them on because you know that's what lady lovely looks like is about it's not all about but you mean you, you gotta put some pixie tails on the lady lovely locks dolls uh no shoes though I have this doll already. <laughs> um, I have also her dress. I found her in America and I found her also in Germany because this was the German part of the flea market. Um, a lot of my Lady Lovely Dogs dolls actually come from flea markets. So uh, although you, you, you think it, I mean, same as My Little Pony, not a lot out there, but here and there you still find them. Uh, she, I would still keep her. I will never get rid of any Lady Lovely Dogs dolls. Um, they also have separate fashion packs. So I have already this one on display uh, with this dress. So maybe if I get at one point uh, another outfit from another fashion pack, she can wear that one. I didn't even talk about this toy line yet so much <laughs> here, but you probably you know, know uh, that I, I collect them. They are these smaller size dolls, also made by Mattel, same as Barbie. Um, in the late 80s, so the line, line started I think in 87, run until 89. Um, three waves, though in Europe, I think, or in Germany especially, we just got two waves where the waves were like squished together, so it was not really the three waves. She's from definitely from the first wave. She is not the main character, the main character is the blonde girl, Lady Lovely Locks, and she is a maiden fair hair, um, um, or I think Seidenwelle in German, yeah. Um, you know they called Prinzessin Seidenwelle? I think so. Um, like one of the two best friends of Lady Lovely Locks and so of the main character. And this uh, character also got releases in the other lines. So there's also um, one of like more like a, uh, from the Island Fun line. And there's also a ballerina version of this, but this is the normal first release. Uh, I have to check, but I think also her dress, there's variants, sometimes the dress looks a little bit different, but I think this is the exact one that I have. Um, I love to collect them because it's not just the doll line, there's also animals in this line, a horse, a dog, kitties with brushable hair that look very like similar to, you know, My Little Pony, etc. So this is such a pastel, beautiful, whimsical uh, toy line. It's like definitely one of my faves. It's maybe my third favorite toy line overall or maybe my fourth depending which what, what mood I am in but like it's so beautiful and um, collecting for them it's fun because it's not a huge line and here and there I come across them still at flea markets so maiden fair here can we stand her up somewhere maybe here next we I think we're getting to some smaller things because there's also like little bits and bobs uh, toys that I bought that are not really connected to doll lines Though this is still connected to what I was just talking about, to this doll line. Yes, I picked up a cassette tape and it is a Lady Lovely Locks cassette tape. Uh, very hard uh, to come by at flea markets. I usually, if I find like older cassette tapes, it's Wendy, sometimes Barbie, it's Rainbow Bride, but the Lady Lockenlicht, that's what Lady Lovely Locks is called in German, uh, series. They are, for me, the best produced cassette tapes. It's one series, I think it's uh, 10 episodes, and it's one on one ongoing story. Pr the production level is so high, the voice actors are so good, the story is so cute, and <laughs> I'm all like, honestly, the number four was one that I was previously missing, but very shortly, like not like I don't know two months ago or something I bought the number four online because I couldn't find it anywhere else and then I came across this at this flea market I should have just waited it's like always when I find when I buy something online chances are high I will find it very shortly after that at the flea market so it is a double but they're so good and I will definitely keep this one because I bought it at the flea market <laughs> they're blaue stein and as I said as it's an ongoing series meaning I mean, maybe ongoing is the wrong word, but it's not an episodic one. It's like one continuous story. It's not ongoing anymore. It's like finished in the late 80s with like a, 
um, 10 episodes but I mean it's like if you're missing one then you're really missing out on a separate like on a specific storyline that kind of then continues in the next one that's why I want to listen to them all uh, chronologically and then definitely definitely I'm still missing some I think number five I do have but then it's like I don't know maybe six or half and seven I'm missing and eight I'm missing and then I have nine and ten or something like that so I don't have all of them yet um, so Honestly, uh, yeah, this was actually uh, the same people. Uh, I, I didn't film it because we were actually already leaving. It was the same people where we bought these dolls here, the, the lot with the, you know, pink and pretty and the diva and with the Zindi and all of these fashions. The same people also had some cassette tapes and I had already put my camera away at this point and we found this. Um, actually, Zelina found it and she was like, oh, what's that? Der blaue Stein, blah, blah. Ah! And I'm like, I could see it like from the picture. It's slightly lovely looks. Um, uh, there's one more thing, a cassette tape re uh, related that I bought and this is actually this cassette player and it's not just the Walkman, I, I guess you can, yeah, you can put um, like um, headphones on it but it also has, has a speaker and um, it works and I don't have one with the speaker so I like usually just when I listen to my old cassette tapes I put headphones on um, which I might still do, especially when I'm sitting at the balcony or something. <laughs> Don't want everyone around me to hear, like, um, like you know, to get on their nerves with my stuff. But when I'm in my inside my room, I could totally just because I don't have a like normal cassette player. Uh, so now I have the small one. It works. It's definitely old because look, it has, it has even the leather or it's not fake leather, but like a case where you could take it out. Um, so it is really cool so and it even comes with a charging t uh, cable so I don't have to put batteries in it though you can also put batteries in it but I can just use this one so it's like a charger when I like leave it on so um, and I got this for three euro <laughs> this was the same um, like vendor where Zelina got the um, Rainbow Bright cassette for free so <laughs> it works very nice the sound quality is also quite good for being like an old old cassette player so um, not mad about this pickup okay um, this is pretty cool though it's not the toy line that I usually go for but I picked up this Power Ranger figure still on cart and this is actually the same vendor, if you've watched Zelina's flea market video or in the hall, where she found the old Mitch doll. Yeah, she found a Mitch from the 60s, early 60s, original box with a couple of original Barbie fashions, such a good condition. Um, I mean, not for three euro, but for 50 euro, which is still like, like a steal. And the same vendor had more toys um, and I was interested I mean, I would have also picked up the mage, but she found it, or she asked him. And I was like rummaging around the boy toys there. Um, so yeah, I should have gone to the Barbie, but there was just one very, very like broken Barbie on the table. So I would have not guessed that this guy had a 60s mage, a vintage mage somewhere. Anyways, I picked up the Power Ranger and um, of course, you probably know this toy line. I mean, it is actually a TV show. Uh, by Saban Entertainment, I think released in 1993. This is also where this figure comes from, 1993. They were produced by Bandai, the other toys. And um, yeah, it's this toy line, uh, not the yeah, toy line, but it's this um, TV show, you know, live action. Uh, these teenagers that then transform into the Power Rangers and fight against evil monsters. Actually, the cool thing about this is that um, they kind of bought the, all of the Power Ranger footage so when they are the rangers and when they're fighting against the monsters from Japan and just like uh, we're doing like um, shoot shoots uh, with um, you know American teenagers when they are not wearing the masks and they smushed this together into the show because this type of show in Japan is was uh, like airing for a long time since I don't know what the 70s or something they're called Super Sentai in, in Japan and there's so many seasons and they're still going but yeah, here over in, in Europe and the US, uh, it was, they needed, they kind of shot separate footage with, you know, Western looking teenagers and smushed it together with this, uh, you know, when they're wearing the suits, etc. Um, and I was not a big fan of them because it was still the time I, 
I wasn't watching like like live action shows. <laughs> I didn't like it. I knew them. Uh, the only memory I have of Power Rangers is that at my school, uh, you, I, I could get um, you know chewing gums, uh, Power Ranger chewing gums, and they had these little pogs in them, these little round, um, you know, cardboard thingies. Um, but and I have never picked up any Power Rangers at the flea market. This time I was like, okay. I collect a couple of boy toy lines and I should have at least one of the Power Rangers. And I saw this one in box. The, the interesting thing is actually the package is not discolored. The Power Ranger inside is a little discolored. Because you can see here the front flap here. This is still the original pink because you see it's a pink Ranger. It's Kimberly. It says it here. Um, but the rest is a little bit darkened to almost more like a, uh, like a red color. <laughs> Uh, this is one of the head flippers. That's why they have this strange body up up here. Um, can you see that? Yep. So if you, when you push this one button or whatever you, yeah, I think the, the, the belt, then she flips her head and then she has without the mask and then with the mask. Um, and they are called transformable action, auto transformers, <laughs> we, whatever in German, um, but mainly you, you say the head flippers to them. And obviously they came with a weapon and they came with one more like thing that you could then when you got all of the Power Rangers build to another accessory and they it also came with a tattoo <laughs> so here's her uh, Piranha Don thingy I haven't really watched it I watched the movie definitely together with Michi because my friend Michi was a big fan of them she wanted to introduce me to the Power Rangers but nah I will not collect a lot of that um, and but having one piece and even like on card is is fine it will go into my boy toy collection where i have like action figures and stuff so i'm not sure where directly i will put it it takes up a lot of space but yeah picked up this power ranger um yeah i found this little figure which is a schleich rainbow bright figure i didn't even know schleich made these um so rainbow bright of course you know it it's a uh, toy line early 80s or early mid 80s uh, the figures were created by Hallmark and then licensed for toy making to Mattel they made these dolls and you know more plushy type the sprites etc um, but apparently the um, like rights also went for making these mini figures to Schleich which is a German company I know a lot of non-German speakers cannot pronounce the word they say something like Schleich or Schleich Schleich or something like that uh, it's pronounced Schleich um, and um, they they're still making these you know rubbery PVC figures today they have their own lines they are very popular in Germany like Bayala they have horses and dinosaurs and all of that but here uh, let me check it said a date I think 85 it says 85 and also has the hallmark marking down there uh, they made a couple of these um, minifigures for the Rainbow Bright line and here we've got um, Canary Yellow or Sabine Sonnenstrahl in German and um, it's, I think it was a small line they didn't make all of the characters I think it was six or so they definitely made Rainbow Bright so Regina Regenbogen and her sprite uh, Twink or uh, Vice Wirbel uh, they made Red Butler and I don't know a couple more but um, Starlight definitely um, you could like think these are the erasers because there's also a set of small erasers but those are different figures so some of them have the same characters or whatever but she's definitely not one of the erasers she says Schleich um, so it's kind of similar to you know the My Little Pony license was for example also given to one of those German companies that made these little PVC rubbery figures but not to Schleich but to Bully, Bully Land um, in the 80s and they made also kind of My Little Ponies and here Schleich made Rainbow Bright. So it's actually cool that I found this one. It was from one of those vendors that had lots of tubs of these minifigures from like all sorts of different things. I don't know, Disney, Garfield, I don't know, whatever they had. Uh, and apparently a couple of those. I found this glow friend. Uh, it's actually uh, one that I already have. It's a snack bug, but I couldn't leave it. It's so rare that I find. It's actually kind of just the second time I ever found a glow friend at the flea market. Um, they were made in the mid-late 80s by Hasbro slash 
Play School, which is kind of a, a, a subs subsidiary, so a part of Hasbro of the company, Play School. Uh, they glow in the dark. And they kind of belong together with a big glow worm, so a soft uh, plushy that had you know a light bulb in it. You would hug it, it would glow, or the head would glow. Um, and they made these smaller figures. They are just, they don't have any points of articulation or anything. Um, they have different molds, they are different kind of worms and insects and butterflies and all of that. And this is the glow snug bug from, yeah, the, 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 the big glow worm was, I think, the first one released in 82. But this, this line here, as it was a little bit, um, you know, it had to do with the My Little Pony line a little bit because of the, um, the TV show that aired uh, in the same block as the My Little Pony cartoon as well, etc. And there is even a little glow. Um, uh, worm in the My Little Pony line. I always <laughs> say that. So it is kind of interconnected a little bit with the My Little Pony line. Um, so they were more from the more like 86 to 87, 8 or something. I, I don't, I don't know. 60, 86, 87, 88, something around that time. I think they were released. Maybe even 89 still. Um, the same one I got from Cat Got <laughs> Kittens actually a while ago. Uh, so like now I have a double of it, but as I said, couldn't leave it. Um, I think it's in a little bit better condition, though I repainted the other one, so I don't know which one I'm keeping. Um, yeah, then I picked up something not really like great or whatever. It's uh, obviously a modern toy. It's Spike from My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Why did I pick up this? bigger spike. I mean, A, I, I don't have a lot of spike. I think I have one spike in my G4 My Little Pony collection, but I remember that this one actually belongs to a Twilight that I have. So this one <laughs> that I a while ago picked up also at the flea market for one euro. I will not pick up these bigger style, the bigger size G4 ponies anymore. But back then it was like, yeah, I want to pick up one, at least a My Little Pony. So I picked up this one. And they together are the um, friendship duet, like pack. They came together. Uh, they are, um, you know, they were released around the time the movie came out. So they are kind of a movie tie-in from uh, 2017. This one. Isn't it me a spike? Yeah. <laughs> They could somehow sing together. I probably get a copyright strike now, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, it has it had something to do with you had to put them mouth to mouth, and then they would kind of sing. Ich freue mich, dass du hier bist. Yeah, great. Um, me too. <laughs> she said she's happy that I'm here. Um, they they have you have to put them very close and then they we would sing später noch mal, okay? Yes, we sing later. Um, they would kind of sing together, then Spike's voice would also come out because he has something that activates something in her. Ugh. Very loud, <laughs> very getting on my nerves a little bit. I, I, I love my little pony friendship is magic. I love the movie, I love, love the songs. When I never watch it in German, it sounds so childish in German. I mean, it's always childish, but I don't know, I, I watch it in English. I, I think the uh, English voice actors are so much better. Um, but now I have them together. That's essentially what I wanted to tell you. Let's keep it going with G4 My Little Pony. No, no ponies, but Equestria Girls minis. I was very happy to see them. I really like this toy line. Um, and they even have their stands so they can stand up. That's amazing. Uh, it's five of them. I bought just all of them, all of the ones I ha they had. Uh, this was this it came in this whole box. I <laughs> have a little box. Uh, it also came with one more head, but I don't know if this goes to the line. It doesn't go to. I don't think it goes to any of the ones that I have here. But maybe let's put it on Pinky's head. <laughs> um, whoopsie. So yeah, these go to My Little Pony, though they're not ponies. They are from the Equestria Girls, like franchise, you could say, where the ponies, it's the same characters that we have in My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, but they um, 
transform into humans. I don't watch this show or haven't watched this show um, and it's also there were also movies. It's probably not that bad but I have no interest in ponies turning into humans but I like these toys. Uh, they also made bigger dolls with you know brushable hair. Eh, those I don't like. I've never picked up one. It would really need to be a very special one that I'm like oh this lo actually looks good. Then I would maybe pick up one to have one but I just prefer the smaller ones. They don't have brushable hair, so they are dolls, but more like action figures, you would say. They are a little bit articulated. They don't really have a good articulation and they're very stiff and uh, or very wobbly in their legs, so that's why they often fall over. But the later waves were re released with these standees. You say it says like minis here. Can you read that? Equestria Girls minis. So, so here you can read it, Equestria Girls Minis, that's what the toy line is called. And then, you know, these function very nice as stands. So you can at least really make them stand up. So I don't know, maybe this, the head goes to Twilight, I don't think so. Um, most of these figures are from uh, 20, so all of them, I think, from 2017. Um, and belong to this uh, one movie called uh, Rainbow Rocks. You, easily I can identify them when they have these two different colored legs so different colored tights we have got rarity we've got twilight sparkle we've got applejack and voila, and fluttershy um i think rainbow dash yeah rainbow dash is missing here um these are all from the like single releases and rainbow dash didn't get a single release in this wave so um but we also have a pinkie pie and she was kind of a little bit more of a special release but also uh, from kind of the rainbow rocks series although she is not wearing her typical rainbow rocks outfit uh, this is um from the splashy art class set so i think she would also come with an easel or something uh, the cool thing is Previously, I did not have a Pinkie Pie and I did not have a uh, an Applejack character. So these definitely are the best editions because I had also already a Twilight and a, uh, you know, Fluttershy, etc. But in different versions. So I initially said, oh, I want to have at least one of uh, each character. So that has definitely happened now of the main six. So I'm very happy with them. Uh, I think for all of them, I paid 10 euro together. Um, so, I don't know if you can at least even see them. Let's put them somewhere here. Okay. Um, and keep, let's keep it going uh, with My Little Pony. Yeah, no, nothing G1. <laughs> There's one or like maybe two, I'm not sure, G1 items, but it's just, you know, one, I think, like a comb that you will see within the accessories. But I found at least not just G4, but also one G3 pony. Um, wow, <laughs> I would have wished for more, like, obviously more G1 stuff, but also G3 stuff would have been nice. Um, so this is the only one that I found and I picked it up, although I have it already. But mine, the one that I have, has a very cut tail. And this one at least has its original length. What's the name of this pony? Um, this is Cherry Blossom. <laughs> Um, cherry Blossom 2 because there was a Cherry Blossom uh, released before in a different pose. I think she's from 2005. So yeah, G3 My Little Ponies were the ones that were out in the 2000s. Um, I think this character later on was kind of changed to be uh, then always called um, Cheerily, if I'm not mistaken. But here she was um, still really called Cherry Blossom. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's the pose where you're like, oh my god, she has the neck so like Oh, to the turn to the side but yeah so it's she's it's one of the poses that I it's the most difficult to display because when you have them on display they always look sideways but yeah at least she's an upgrade her hair is full length um, yeah the rest of her hair it's also not in the best condition but I mean I did my best it looked horrible <laughs> beforehand um, yeah so um, cherry blossom second pose you could say from 2005 she was released in three different sets and you can almost never tell which sets she came with one was released with an additional baby pony one came with a boutique play set and another um, cherry blossom so this cherry blossom then also came with a seaside set I think also together with other ponies so I cannot tell which release this was but 
at least I found a G3, my little pony, and I can upgrade the other one that I have. So, um, let's put her here. <sighs> then something that's maybe at least a little similar <laughs> to my little pony, though not super, but yeah, I picked up three fake elephants. Um, you know that I kind of collect them ever, ever, every now and then I come across them and they are, you know, they are not, you cannot say that they go, like were produced by any specific toy company. They were produced with this mold like in, like from different toy companies, probably from the eighties up until I don't know when, because I cannot tell these could also be newer because mainly the ones from the eighties, early nineties, they glow in the dark. Uh, these don't glow in the dark, none of them, but they have crazy cool colors. And I have this one, this exact one um, on card actually. So I have actually have the same one on card, I think, with the same like, um, what is it? I mean, it's it's sprayed with, um, with the same kind of airbrush on it. I mean, I have it next to me here. Thing. this is the exact same one just this one has a little more like airbrushing also here while this one don't have it um, and yet it says cutie elephant and um, it can't be that vintage because at the back you see it, this one for example was made by Ostoy and it has an email address on it so I guess this can't be like much older than the 2000s so that proves it kind of to me that these fakey elephants were still produced in the around the 2000s and they don't even have like lashes anymore <laughs> so the the ones that are alone in the dark still have a tiny bit tiny bit cuter because they have lashes so and i guess this was a three pack probably um but i still loved to pick them up because they have so cool colors i mean look at this super vibrant neon uh orange and it has um even the hair is still in kind of a good condition here not so much but this is like a very very hot neon pink and then a hot neon green so actually uh, they can go very well into my little fakey elephant um, collection and like you know as a pop of color because the most ones that I find um, which are the ones that are um, the older ones the glow and dark ones but mostly I just find them in this flesh color and it kind of gets boring when you always just have this flesh light rose pink all the time so these are cool colors okay let's get to some more like newer small toys that I picked up um, these two here are from um, the cave club line um, I like cave club is like a doll line mainly from the like I don't know like two 2020 around maybe 2019 2020 20, I don't know around that time so not <laughs> terribly long ago um, made by um, by Mattel and they are these very cute dolls uh, with a you know prehistoric theming they look like you know, cave girls cave cave people and they have like prehistoric animals as as uh, pets so there's some dinosaurs or some you know like mammoths or whatever stuff like that and um, sometimes they come with big animals and sometimes they came with small animals and they are also these separate you know surprise eggs that you could get that had just one animal in there so this one here I think this was came in packaged with a doll or with a playset so it is either from uh, the Emberly doll I think or it came with a per perfect pet adventure playset that also came with I think the doll but either way it is just this little saber tooth here and I like them I have two of the dolls currently I think I do have just one on display of them anymore um, not getting very deep into collecting them but whenever I find the small animals I pick them up they're colorful they have cute uh, sculpts and cute um, like you know faces etc so and they are you know prehistoric animals i like dinosaurs these are both my dinosaurs but yeah here we've got a sloth this one did not came with a doll but from one of those um you know x surprise thingies um i don't know there were glitter there was a glitter series or there was one that came with kinetic sand but basically it was a blind bag toy and you can still get them on if you have i just checked recently on um i just recently checked on amazon for example one of the, the glitter series you can still get 
um, and also still a lot of uh, Cave Club dolls for very cheap, even in box, um, just normally for the retail price or cheaper. So if you would still like to collect the series, that right now would be the time, I guess. But I just pick up these small ones and, you know, I like them. <laughs> so the other toy line that I've kind of decided that I want to always pick up when I see them um, is now not, not general Hedgemolds, no, 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 but Hedgemolds Pixie Riders. Is that the correct word? Hatchimals Pixies Riders. Yes, um, I have found that I have found two others at flea markets. You have not seen those videos yet, but um, they basically are little pixies, so little dolls. I, I'm not crazy about them, but when I find them with them, it's fine. But they come with these animals that they can ride on, and these ride-on animals are so adorable. Um, I have a swan and the other one is more like a centipede um, and this one is like a tiger um, and I just this one is maybe not as cute as the others but as I saw uh, that this one was here and you can make them like ride the animals they stick on the saddles they all have wings and a lot of accessories I mostly when I find them at flea markets obviously they <laughs> don't have a lot of the accessories so they mostly also have like, I don't know, necklaces and crowns and blah, 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 stuff that you could stuck to, stick to the ones. Often they are also missing the wings because they are just here with a little ball joint in there. Um, they're also a new toy line, obviously, um, somewhat new. I think also around like, like 2020 or something. So 2022 even. Um, this one has flocked hair, so the doll and the tiger and is called um, Radiant Roxy and Tigret Glider. So um, I don't know, the other one that I have, for example, is a Swanling Glider. And I just, I just like them. They are small enough and uh, they are a new toy line that every now and then, like it actually kind of a lot of flea markets in a row, I found them now. So you can still also find them online, um, like new in box, they're pretty expensive for being this small when you get them new because they have so many accessories. They're also kind of a, I think more like a blind bag toy because a lot of stuff is now like then you, know, you get separate little packages and there's this accessory and then there's this accessory and etc. etc. But yeah, here I found this one, very colorful. So this is not the, my favorite one of the ones that I have so far, but yeah, I kind of, when I find those at flea markets, I will probably pick them up. <laughs> So if you're seeing this, then yep, this is halfway through. We are finishing with part one here and in a couple of days or next week, depends, uh, we will like take part two of this haul because it's too, way too much for one video. So I hope you enjoyed uh, everything until here. If you did, don't forget to, you know, give it a thumbs up, comment down below. And if you're not subscribed, maybe you want to subscribe to my channel. So yeah, so until the next video, Thank you so much for watching. See you real soon and may the toys be with you. Bye.